Have you ever wondered what makes a good story? How do authors tell a story that is interesting and compelling to read? One way is to use different literary devices to emotionally connect the reader to the story. Literary devices are techniques that writers use to get their message across. In Lord of the Flies, William Golding uses several literary devices to help the reader connect with the story in a meaningful way. Some literary devices stand alone, while others are used in combination, providing the reader a rich experience. This lesson will explore the literary devices of illusion, irony, personification, foreshadowing, hyperbole, simile, and archetype. Illusion is when an author references, either indirectly or directly, another piece of literature or art. Lord of the Flies had many indirect allusions to the Bible and to biblical symbolism. The island was described similar to the Garden of Eden, references and descriptions about the beast, speaking of blasphemies by Jack, identifying a snake thing, and many others. An example of a direct allusion in Lord of the Flies is when the boys list their favorite island stories, such as Treasure Island, Swallows and Amazons, and Coral Island. Coral Island was actually mentioned several times, and is a story about boys stranded on an island and having an exciting and fun adventure. Referring to this book is an illusion, however, it can also be considered irony. Irony is a literary technique used to indicate the opposite intention or meaning. Repeated allusions to the Coral Island book are considered examples of irony because the references are the opposite of the boy's experience in Lord of the Flies. Even at the end of the book, when the officer rescues the boys, he states, jolly good show, like the Coral Island. Coral Island was a book about fun, boyish adventures, not the savagery experienced by the boys in Lord of the Flies. Another specific example of irony occurs in chapter 2, when Jack states, we've got to have rules and obey them. After all, we're not savages. The ironic part of this statement is that Jack leads the savage group who kills Piggy. There is also symbolic irony. At the beginning of the book, fire is needed for survival to signal for rescue. However, by the end of the book, fire is used for destruction and to smoke out Ralph. Ironically, when used for destruction, it signaled a rescue. Personification is when an author gives an inanimate object human traits or characteristics. Here are some examples of personification of objects in The Lord of the Flies. The sand trembling beneath the heat haze. Yellow flame that poured upwards and shook a great beard of flame. A thread of white smoke climbed up the sky, and the circle shivered with dread. Sand cannot tremble, flames cannot shake, smoke cannot climb, and circles cannot shiver, let alone feel emotions. These are all things humans can do, not inanimate objects. This is why these are examples of personification. Foreshadowing is when an author gives hints about events that will come later in the story. One of the most significant uses of foreshadowing in the book is the involvement of rocks. When Ralph, Simon, and Jack first climb to the top of a high hill, they roll a rock over the edge, and it tumbles into the forest, destroying a path. This foreshadows future doom of the island. This rock incident also foreshadows two other specific rock incidences. The rock that Roger throws at Piggy, which kills him, and the rock that the savages throw at Ralph to force him out of his hiding place so that they could kill him. Hyperbole is exaggerating details to prove a point. Golding uses hyperbole throughout the book to convey strong messages. For example, one of the kids says, We've got to make smoke up there, or die. Would they really die? Hardly. But Golding wrote this to express how desperately they needed a signal. We are also given the sentence, It seemed there were more little ones than could be counted and Piggy was soon overwhelmed. That clearly means there were a lot of younger children, but surely they could count them all. What about the sentence, if Jack were a leader, it would be all hunting all the time? Would there really be hunting all the time? Wow, that's exaggerated. Another literary device often used in Lord of the Flies is a simile. A simile, or figurative language, is using a comparison such as like or as. Let's look at a few examples. The boys lay, panting like dogs. Here we are comparing the boys to dogs. Ralph dropped words like heavy round stones among the little groups that crouched or squatted. 
Here we are comparing Ralph's words to heavy stones. Within the irregular arc of coral, the lagoon was still as a mountain lake. This time we are comparing the lagoon to a mountain lake. Let's look at one more. A tree exploded in the fire like a bomb. Now we are comparing the explosion to a bomb. An archetype is when an author uses a typical situation or character to represent universal values or human nature. There are many archetypes in Lord of the Flies that fall into two categories. The first category is situational archetypes. There are two of these kinds in Lord of the Flies. The first is the quest. Often authors have characters go on a quest, searching for something. Here the boys are looking for fire and trying to be rescued. The other kind of situational archetype is a loss of innocence. Literature can include archetypes of loss of innocence or coming of age by means of significant adult-like encounters, such as sexual experience, violence, or death. Events such as the boys painting themselves transforms the boys into savages. The death of Piggy is also an irreversible loss of innocence. The other type of archetype found in Lord of the Flies is character archetypes. There are two specific character archetypes found in this book. The first is the hero archetype. Ralph is written as the archetypal hero. He is brave and charismatic, which makes him elected early on as the leader. Readers will naturally cheer him on to win and be the good person. The second character type is the wise sage. Piggy is depicted as the archetype wise character. He is intelligent yet vulnerable. He wears glasses and is cautionary. Golding uses numerous literary devices in Lord of the Flies. He uses illusion, which is referencing directly or indirectly another piece of art or literature. He also uses irony, or indicating the opposite intention or meaning. Personification is giving an object human traits. A hyperbole is an over-exaggeration. A simile is a comparison using like or as. Lastly, an archetype is using a typical situation or character to represent universal values or human nature. This lesson provided examples of each, but as you read the book, try to look for more. They're like little hidden gems.